Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Adubato. It is our honor to uh, be joined once again by Darlene Love, the Darlene Love, and she's joined by uh, Chris Ruggiero there, recording artist. Chris, I'll talk about you in a second, but can okay. I talk about can I, can of I course. To Please do. Darlene Love is a musical icon. She is an entertainment icon. And the extraordinary movie, 20 uh, Feet from Stardom, she was the star. It was in the Montclair Film Festival. I remember it kicked it off that year. I had the honor of interviewing her. And she has brought down the house everywhere she goes. Darlene, thank you for joining us on Public Broadcasting. This is fantastic. I'm really happy to be here. Darlene, do me a favor. Who's this guy we got on? <laughs> Tell us about Chris, because I know you you're doing duets together. You're mentoring him. You have a Christmas uh, series coming on. Tell us about Chris and your connection to him. You know what? It's been years and years and years since I've been around young people. I mean, actually to mentor them, because now they're doing something else that I'm not doing. <laughs> But Chris was one of those I call, and a lot of us in the business calls, an old soul. He's been here before. <laughs> and he just has one of those magical voices. Like me, I, I'm not a person that riffs. I can riff, but if the song doesn't need it to be riffs and has a beautiful melody, just sing it. And that is Chris. And it's very hard, and he's very unique to be able to find a young man like that. Chris, what's that like to hear from Darlene Love? Oh, well, it it just, uh, I'll tell you what, it, it never gets old and it never will, because I grew up listening to Darlene. Uh, in the car with my parents, wherever we went, Darlene was playing, or a playlist was playing with music of the 50s and 60s, and Darlene's voice was absolutely on that playlist all the time, around the house, and when it became Christmas time, all we heard was Darlene's uh, voice. So, I mean, I grew up listening to Darlene and she has one of those voices that just hits you in the chest and warms your heart. And to hear one of my favorite icons talk about me that way is, uh, it's, it's definitely special and it's touching. Darlene, you and Christmas, I mean, the link. For folks who may not understand why Darlene Love and Christmas go hand in hand, talk about that. Well, you know, I actually started in church. My father was a pastor. Where'd you grow up? Uh, California, born and okay. raised. And um, when you have three brothers and a sister, you grow up in a church where your father is the pastor, you sing in the choir, whether you can sing or not. Thank God we could all sing. <laughs> <laughs> and mostly the, uh, during the holidays is when we, the choir and our churches, I grew up Pentecostal. And it's about Christmas. It's about Jesus. It's about the baby Jesus. It's about when he came, he saved. They did all of those wonderful things. So we had a wonderful background with Christmas music. And then when I met Phil Spector and we started doing this Christmas album, at first we thought he was crazy. Like, you're going to do a rock and roll Christmas album. It's never been done before. So we were trying to figure him out, and I'm sure he was trying to figure us out. Well, by the time we got halfway through the album, it was fantastic. We were all just blown away. And then mm -hmm. when he said he was writing a Christmas song that was an original, I said, hold on a minute now. What do you put in Christmas, new Christmas songs after Silent Night and Old Little Bethlehem, uh, Old Little Bethlehem? Help me out here, Chris. Oh, little town. Okay, there it is. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Yeah, it's a and tongue twister. Those, yeah, and all of those wonderful songs. How do you put in a Christmas song called Christmas Baby, Please Come Home? But after you have Leon Russell on piano, <laughs> you have, quote unquote, Sonny and Cher singing in the background. <laughs> and all of our friends got through doing that song. It was like, we were just all just stood in space and just... All right, I Googled, you know, like, really, really? And then we had a setback. Robert uh, Kennedy got assassinated. 1968. Yes, and so Phil Spector didn't put the album out. Mm. So we had to wait a whole nother year in anticipation for this album to come out that nobody has ever done before, but they knew That's right. we were doing it. And so from that to this, the other part of this that made Christmas so special for me, when I moved to New York, 
We did a play at a club called The Bottom Line. And the Bottom Paul Line. Schaefer played Phil Spector in the play. So he invited David Letterman down to see the show. That night on David Letterman's show, he said, we have to have that girl come and sing this song. It's the greatest Christmas song I've ever heard. And I thought it was gonna be only one year. It was 28 years. And therefore, my that's, I, that's when I started doing Christmas tours. Because before that's right. that, I would be at the bottom line singing a few songs, but then it got bigger and bigger and mm. bigger. Here we are almost 35 years later, and I'm yeah. still doing Christmas shows. <laughs> So, Chris, let me ask you, you, you and Darlene doing the Christmas duet, how does that come together, A and B, what is it? Particularly after sure. Darlene laid that Christmas history out, which is, by the way, check out Darlene on all those Letterman appearances. She's exceptional. Go ahead, Chris. Well, I was, I was asked in an interview uh, who I would love to do my, a duet with, who would be a dream duet partner. And on, on that short list, Darlene was at the very top. And someone actually sent the video of me saying this to Darlene, and she saw that I said uh, that she was one of the people I would love to do a duet with. And so she started doing some research about me, and she actually posted a video of me on her Facebook page. And, and she probably didn't realize or know, but all the fans started commenting that they already knew me, which was great. Because then I think it, it solidified the fact a little more that, okay, maybe we could do something together that people already know me. And, uh, and we just hit it off. Uh, Darlene's people got in touch with my people. We had lunch at the Palm in New York City. And I, I met Darlene for the first time there. And I felt like I, I've known her my whole life, you know, since. And, and, um, and I was telling her that there was this song that I was working on. And I was working on a whole Christmas album. And there was this one song that I just didn't really know what to do with. And so she took the song home, Grown Up Christmas List, and she said, I would love to duet with you on it. And when I heard that, I almost hit the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, you know, and, and let's make sure we put up information so people can find out more about Darlene and, and Chris. And, and I was remiss. This is part of a series that was created uh, called The Arts Connection. Our executive producer, one-on-one, -on -one, Georgette Timoney, who knows the arts more than most, said, why don't we talk about The Arts Connection? And we're going to be doing things on theater and different plays and, and music, et cetera. But, but Darlene, the arts today in 2023 going, 2022 going to 2023, the arts are more important than ever before. The arts connection more important because? Because we have to learn from the past what's going on today and keep dipping back into the past of this music because it is never gonna go away. I was talking with my husband uh, this morning. We was talking about Nat King Cole and, uh, you know, Bing Crosby. I mean, though, even though you don't hear them as much today, it's people still play all those songs at Christmas time because they, like Chris was saying, it brings family together. Sure does. Well, any other time of the year, even New Year's, families have scattered. But at Christmas time, it's a special time, and it's only Christmas music playing in the house, and it goes from gander to gander. It doesn't go that far. You know, it stays here with us in 2020, but back in the 50s and the 60s, that's when all that music meant being with the families. So we have to, I think, always connect with that music to bring it up to date. And Chris, let me ask you, as part of our Art, the Arts Connection series, you're 23 years of age, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Darlene broke in even younger than that. Um, question, breaking into the arts, breaking into the music field with social media being what it, what it is, all the different platforms, ways to access music. If you had your druthers, I know Darlene called you an old, school, old soul, you've been here before. Would you rather break in now or let's say a few years back in the day? <laughs> You know, that's a really tough question. There are certain aspects of back in the day that would have been better and certain things about now. I mean, technology is a great thing. And and for me, especially Facebook. And what I love about Facebook is that I get to connect with so many fans from all over the country and, in fact, all over the world. And so back in the day, before Facebook or Internet or computers, I wouldn't have been able to do that as easily. But also now with this technology, there's so many platforms in which people can entertain themselves you have television youtube TikTok, instagram a lot of competition so it's a it's a little bit harder to to corner i guess your market so to speak so i i don't know maybe i would rather be back in the day 
for those reasons. Well, uh, Chris breaking in now, Darlene, who broke in and, and has never stopped, gets, gets better and stronger every year. Darlene Love and Chris Ruggiero, recording artist, check out the information we put out there. To Darlene and Chris, we cannot thank you enough. This is the Arts Connection. Thank you, my friends. Thanks so much Art for having Chris. us, Steve. Thank you. You got it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Bye-bye. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, New Jersey Institute of Technology, NJM Insurance Group, the Russell Berry Foundation, Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, New Jersey's Clean Energy Program, the New Jersey Education Association, the Northward Center, and by Englewood Health. Promotional support provided by Insider NJ and by AM970, The Answer. NJM Insurance Company has been serving New Jersey policyholders for more than 100 years. But just who are NJM's policyholders? They're the men and women who teach our children, the public sector employees who maintain our infrastructure, the workers who craft our manufactured goods, and New Jersey's next generation of leaders the people who make our state a great place to call home. NJM, we've got New Jersey covered.